Hello everybody, welcome to the official live cast of the tiebreaker match from Group O. We have Fez and his Boga up against Andri and his absolutely boring unpainted Imperial Nobility team. It's, we've got a knob off, it's very exciting. I am going to change these to red and blue so you can tell who's who. So Fez is blue, Andri is red and uh, yeah, so they both, they both finished on four points in Group O. They drew against each other, so they would have gone head-to-head, -head, but because they drew against each other, we have a replay, the tiebreaker match. Andri actually has the build that I would have taken um, if I was, you know, had a gun to my head and was forced to take Imperial Nobility. Six guards, two dodges, plus a leader thrower. Um, but uh, since this tournament has started, I'm liking more and more this ogre here with his bow, and his feathers with block. I think a block ogre maybe actually is better because then, you know. The problem is that you lose two guard, right? The, the way you win games as knobs, they're a bad team, right? So you win the game by making three dice blocks with your ogre and getting lucky. And block increases that viability. So without blue, red, they're, I mean, this, these are the default pink and white. And then these are red and white. No, black and white. Black and white. But it's, I mean, it's really hard, right? There's so much white on both of them, and they're the same race, and they're hard to tell apart anyway. It's actually impossible to see what's going on. So, yeah, we have to have red and blue. <laughs> but the other things are the same, right? Apart from the, so, because the guard is a double for the air, a secondary for the thrower, and a primary for the ogre, or his block is a secondary for the ogre, and a primary for the thrower. So basically they've got identical teams apart from they switched to guard for two block. Which honestly I kind of I at first I was on the I was on the Andre build. The more that I've seen the matches actually play out and the fact that the only way you can win is uh by punching things. Three dice. Oh you should have pushed across, you could have still got three hits. Don't like this. Oh my god, what an LOS from Fez. Instant dicing. <laughs> oh god. Glorious. No, what a I joke. won't give in. Until I'm victorious. <laughs> and I will defend. I will Five defend. blocks, no knockdown. Do you love a good knob off in the morning. Four. Hey, and block! Block did something! There you go, look, instant, instant block value. And thank you very much, mm, Samage. What an absolute legend, staying fantastic for 31 glorious months, nearly eight Who will be the pregnancies. Thank you so much. And I can tell you about these teams in addition to their nobbing. Fez is from the PlayStation, Troll Bowl is how he qualified. And Andri is from PC, Spanish and qualified through the Season 3 official playoffs. Oh yeah, and Fez is British as well. And Mrs. Fez is probably here. <laughs> I've got a feel, yep, Mrs. Fez. Hello, Mrs. Fez. So that's, that's nice, isn't it? Offering a bit of support to Fez's knobs. <laughs> yeah, so Block pays off, but um, he only has four guard to uh, Andre's six guard. So, we will see. Oh, instant removal. Oh my, like, honestly, right? Like, six blocks, a knockdown. One block, a Kaz. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, Blood Bowl, eh? What a, what a great game. But, it, you know, it's a dice game. This can happen. Everybody knows it's a dice game. <laughs> I bet you do. <laughs> Admin dice. Admin dice. Well. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Poglet. Like literally every like it's it's like clockwork. It's in it's actually insane, like it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable how regular it is. Oh.
Let's see what happens next turn as well. well. I don't know. No, not necessarily next turn, but always after the LOS. It's always a lame LOS into removal. How oh, old this the pink? Like this is good, isn't it? Right? Because he's got so much guard. It's just going to be hard for uh, Fez to do anything except three dice blitz with his ogre, which is what he's doing, right? It's the power. And he does not. You'll do nothing. Now Fez has the unfortunate problem of also, you know, having to try and play Blood Bowl a little bit. <laughs> Versus eight guard. No, it's not eight guard, it's six guard. I don't know why I said eight. He's got two more than him, and I thought Nobs had six. Nobs have four guard. Um, other knobs have six guard. Blue versus red. It's got to be blue versus red. There's just too much white on the models. To uh, not have that. But Andre just used the default coaching facilities and cheerleaders. Whereas Fez has some skinks and some undead uh, sideline with a slam mage priest. So that's a very interesting combination, isn't it? See, so this is the thing, right? Andre's having to blitz with his ogre anyway, right? Except he just hasn't got block on it. So, it's a it's a weird thing. Like, you've just forced into blitzing with your ogre every turn. It's such a weird team. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> yes, Pogler, that is the problem with... with uh, Cosmetics, indeed. Um, that is the problem. But, you know, hopefully... They've got the templates thing working, haven't they? For to saving your team. So hopefully they can, like, save names and customizations on that. And then at least you'll just have to, like, set it up once. To uh, that, Then then I think that would be much better, right? If you could just set all of your names and set all of your customizations and save all of those. That would be a really great thing. <laughs> exactly, Savage. Don't don't tell Mrs. Fez how much they cost. <laughs> That's a joke. They're very they're very cheap, very cheap. None of these are. Uh, don't worry, don't worry. None of these are expensive. They're all like <laughs> they're all like a dollar or something. <laughs> No, like five hundred pound. What? What? What's that? It's Counter Strike. Is it the Counter Strike knives that are like a thousand dollars and stuff? Or more? I don't know. I know there's some that are like super expensive. More than that? Yeah, Jesus. Mad. AWP is that is that uh, aliens versus predator? <laughs> yeah, I thought so. That's the German version. Also, a bit of contact here. A bit of contact. Andre. That gets his three dice blitz and two on the ogre. <laughs> it's just funny, isn't it? That's all it is. It's just literally ogres blitzing things on three dice every turn. That's that's the game. That's that's the options you have as an Imperial Nobility coach. <laughs> My ogre must smash. <laughs> Well, Baron Bucky, that's a bit mean, isn't it? You know, who are you to call people stupid? At the end of the day, if people want those things, they get them. Supply and demand, isn't it? The beauty the beauty of supply and demand, if people want things, they get them. 
If they don't, they don't. Just because somebody disagrees with you, it doesn't make them stupid. I mean, it does if they disagree with me, of course. But, <laughs> but not you. <laughs> That's just a joke. There you go. Just a joke. Like on Top Gear. I'm surprised we didn't get the Ogre on Ogre action here. He's just blocked his square. I would have gone for the... Um, hit the other guy's Ogre, seeing as Ogres are what it's all about. But um, maybe he's going to try to uh, block the Ogre with the Wrestler here. <laughs> Who's got the biggest knob? Only a two dice on a blodger. I didn't like that bit, I'll be honest with you. Not a fan of that one from Fez. Ooh, doesn't stand firm. Does stun him. I also didn't really like the guard in here, right? The guard in here doesn't do anything. That's you one D. The guard in there would have made him do a 2D here. And uh, instead, he skulls. And now, Andre might put a bit of pressure on. The stun helps though, the, the stun helps keep him off his back a little bit. The problem with the dirty player, well, first of all, there isn't space, right? This is very tight. We've got we've got the two blodgers. I think you have to have two blodgers. We've got the four guard blockers. I think you have to have that. So then you've only got two skills left. Leader on the thrower is essential to get any uh, like a sane amount of rerolls. So then you've so that's sorry, that's that's seven skills that are basically unarguable. And then you've got two skills left, which is a primary and a secondary, which is. You know, they split that for the over and the thrower because they're the two non-linemen. And then we've gone double guard or double block. So it's not really, it's not really possible, unfortunately, to fit anything extra in. Uh, the spike buggied as well as nuffle. Yeah. Like spike dot buggied or something is a, is a thing that shows stats. I don't know if... Does Nuffle show player st coach stats now? I can't see anything there. Oh, you can't search for the coach. Well, that, that with Spike Boogie, you can you can search for the coach there. So we've got the ball based by Stand Firm. Ah, uh, find a team, then click the coach. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> Hello Ordont, it's a clear ogre win for Fez. He has a bow, he has spikes, and he has a makeshift crown with feathers. Um, Andre's entire team is completely uncustomized. To the point of even having the default colors and logo. Pathetic. And he has block, yeah, so he is also the most powerful. He looks the best and, in fact, is the best. This is a very tough problem, though, for Fez. The guards are in and uh, making his life a misery. He's really going to want to... Uh Blitz with the ogre. <laughs> okay, so here we are. We're all on this one in nine then. So this was a risk from Andre. And uh, Fez had the confidence to blitz with block because he's, you know, he's got block and he hasn't. So it is going to come down to this one in nine dodge. If he makes this dodge, he's past the, uh, he's past the knobs, and you know he's got, he's got forward, and he's going somewhere, and he's pretty happy. But if he fails this dodge. It's an absolute disaster. 
I did, Dimmy. I did. I did. Oh, but look what confidence does. Confidence killed the cat and has lost the game for the knobs. He should not have had that confidence. Instantly loses because of confidence. Um, hello, Dimmy. Yeah, that was, that's why you should never, ever, ever have confidence in Blood Bowl. It leads to you trying to do something that works eight times out of nine and you instantly fail it and lose the game. I mean, that was the, that, I mean, that basically was the, uh, was the thing right there, right? It, it, you know, eight times out of nine he makes this dodge, one time in nine he fails it, and if he fails it, basically he loses. And uh, while it's not over yet, it's absolutely horrible. Horrible for him now. Horrible. You can be my wingman anytime. Horrible. A seismic F equity shift. You can be mine. Hello, Mongloom. Thank you very much for the raid. Glorious. He got he got knobbed on. He got knobbed on. Um, yeah, that was it. I mean, it, it was it's. This is why I didn't choose humans or or World of Light. It was why I didn't choose humans at the World Cup on Blood Bowl two, all those years ago. And it's why I tend to not consider all World Alliance on ability or humans ever again. Because at the end of the day, your tournament life will come down to making an eight out of nine dodge guaranteed and kind of regularly right and it's kind of too easy to fail a one in nine uh, 11 percent of the time and that was a critical role and of course andre makes the eight out of nine to pick it up and yep yep that is the problem Yep, that's a good idea, Pogler. That's a good idea. The dice, you know, if it wasn't for the dice, I'd win every time. That's, uh, <laughs> that was, uh, who was it? Phil Helmuth won it. Phil Helmuth with poker. If it wasn't luck, I'd win every time. Um, and, you know, that's that's the problem, isn't it? That's the, that is the problem. The dice are always going to be there, um, no matter what race you pick, no matter what you do. Um, oh, my God, that's a good question. Or oh, don't. This might be... The fourth knob off. I've got a feeling this is the fourth knob off. Um, <laughs> very good, Pogler. Maybe you should, Mrs. Fez. Yeah, he'll, he probably won't be too sad. I don't think, honestly, because um, I think it was this game was always going to be tough. I think I think he'll have been a bit sad when Andre beat Gol Gol Bear by two 0 If he'd beaten two one, he wouldn't have. You know, then Fez would have gone through. If he'd beaten 1 0, Fez would have gone through. That 2 0 getting to this point, I think it was already. You know, there was a. It's not resignation, but you, you accept that you can lose, right? Like, even if you think you're better, even if you think you're favoured, you know you can lose, right? At the end of the day, because it's blood ball. So, whether. Whether. Whether you think. Um, you know, no, no matter who you think is better at, at blood ball or has the better team or anything. you still got to play an extra game, right? And you can always lose that. Oh yeah, there was two in the other group. Yeah, it's the fifth knob off. Yeah, yeah, it's the, it's the fifth knob off. Chrissy B's correct. The fifth knob off. Yes, exactly. I mean, Andre is good as well. Yeah, I'm, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just, I just wasn't, I wasn't trying to diss Fez in front of Mrs. Fez, but yes, you know, Andre is probably better at blood ball than Fez as well. So that makes it doubly bad. <laughs> Not something I've ever had to deal with, of Glorious. course. No, I won't give in until I'm victorious, <laughs> and I will defend. I will defend. Nope. 61 months WTF. Unbelievable. Oh my god, he double ones. Double ones, and then double ones on the armor as well. Quad ones. Nothing he did that turn was going to work. Absolute Dyson. Yeah, Andrew's one of the best players in the tournament. Um, if he had taken anything except Imperial Ability, I would have counted him amongst the favorites. So, uh... Yeah, absolutely. I, I would rate him top eight in this tournament. But he did 
shoot himself in the foot by choosing Imperial Nobility. And it nearly cost him. He was so close. He was one touchdown away from not making the not making the uh, tiebreaker match. Never mind not making the top two. So he very, very nearly didn't make it. And now obviously it's looking like he will make it because he's got the ball and uh, on his opponent's drive. But, it, you know, it's not over yet. It's not over yet. And, uh... <laughs> I'll donate 20 quid if you manage to get Andy and Trey to say knob off during the official cast. I'll try. Thanks, old dog. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, 60, 61 months is unbelievable. Thank you very much for having me. Five years, 15 beaver pregnancies. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Thank you very much. I mean, the thing is now, Andy should be able to avoid making one, right? Because he's in such a dominant position. So, yeah. Well, but on his own heart, yeah, on his own drive, yeah, on his own drive. Uh, knobs, people tell me knobs are better on defense than offense, of course, I think. I think they're kind of equally bad on both. But, um, <laughs> yes, on defense, he allegedly uh, struggle, and then... Yeah, so maybe, you know, maybe maybe Fez can turn him over and win 1-0 on Andre's drive. Make it a 1-1, go to overtime. This game will go to overtime if it is required. The thing is, of course, um, Andre being 1-0 up will have the freedom to go for a quicker touchdown if he can get it. So it's going to need a sterling defensive effort from Fez to deny the knobs. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Pogler. Yeah, yeah, anything can happen. <laughs> oh, well, there was a one in three into a knockout. If that guy stays out, big loss. It's not over, guys. Four, three, one dice. Pow, kill, ball in crowd, up to here. Bounces, catches it, runs up, can't hand off, cans off to this guy, runs up and scores. Like, this can actually happen. Like, the insane thing is that can actually happen, right? Because it's blood ball. It's not even that ridiculous, right? A 4-3 dodge, rough. 1-D for a 6, rough. But it's possible. Then if he goes there, it's a 3-8 to go in the crowd. And then it could go in diagonally. You could knock him out there. And then the ball could come in there. And then bounce to here. And he could hand it off. And I mean, that's getting ludicrous now, but it could happen. It could happen. <laughs> Get your knobs out. There's one knob out there. And there's another knob out here. <laughs> Thanks, Odon. I'll do my best. <laughs> <laughs> Extra stream time, brilliant. <laughs> Things can happen. He's going for it. He's going for it. He's even got a garden. Oh my god, it's two dice. It has to re-roll it. Gets the pow! He gets the pow! He doesn't put him in the end zone! No! Knocked out for Fez. Oh! Oh, I'd have pushed him in the end zone there to try and get it you know, into the crowd. Well, that's just, this is actually brilliant because now if he gets knocked out, he'll be in the crowd. Wow! What a manoeuvre. What a manoeuvre. Unbelievable scenes. Fez, and now he's got this guy in scoring range as well. Yes, he's got a scoring threat. He's got the ball. Fwah. Not easy. Now for Andre. <laughs> yes, probably. <laughs> oh, wow. That's unbelievable, isn't it? I mean, it, after just saying it was possible, like it, well, it wasn't that unlikely to 4 3 and then get the 1D, but I didn't think of moving this guy in. I didn't even think he could reach this guy. And uh, I guess he could, because he did. Wow.
That's actually it's actually a bit of a disaster now, funnily enough, for Andre this. These are both linemen, so they've got four plus dodgers. Maybe he should rush here. But he's not he doesn't want to use a reroll on it. I think he just has to one D. Oh no, I guess he could move the guard there and then dodge two D, or he's just gotta Blitz 1D. Could go there and 2, but then he's got to stand firm, so he might not move him. He could rush twice. But then that's still just a 1D, and then 1D to surf. This is tricky. Throw on his own there. Okay, he's just stood up, this guy. He does the dodge 1D blitz and fails the dodge, doesn't re-roll it. And now the thrower... ...gets wrestled. The thrower could, um... No, pass it to this guy. Oh, no, he can't hand off. You could try and pow this one and then he could hand it off. Yeah. The, the bad thing is he's not even good at throwing. <laughs> the bad thing is the Imperial Thrower isn't even good at throwing. You can't lob it straight to him because it could get intercepted. So you want to use a, uh, a relay somehow. And you don't want to give Andrew another chance. There's a strong argument of just moving here, right? And just punching and then, like, blitzing with the ogre. Like, blitz with the ogre, come back, punch. Ball come up here, punch, and just punch things, right? There was a strong argument for that. Because anything he does here could just lose him lose him the game. He's got no re-rolls himself. But scoring here is so good that you want to try it. That'd be what? A four plus pass? Oh, he's just going direct. He's just going. Oh my god, he r double rushed without re rolls. Wildly inaccurate. Oh, okay, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad a wildly inaccurate. I think if you want to try and score, the best play is dodging this guy out, blitzing him, and then, uh, and then passing to him. The problem is that gives him a free player, right? So. I guess that's why I didn't want to do that. But I think that was the most chance of scoring. Um, but now... There's not much chance. Oh, this is the throw. He's just, ooh, this guy... Oh, no, he's gone along. The throw was in the wrong place, unfortunately, for, uh, for Fez. Okay, so we can get him in the end zone. Can this throw a reach? No. So I guess it is just the thrower runs up to here and then lobs it. He's not a throw, he's a blitzer. So he's a PA4, so he needs a 6 plus pass. And he fails. Okay, so he escaped with a nil nil. Well done, Fez. No disaster. Oh my god, we could have a nil-nil over time. <laughs> it's possible. That's what happens when you're caught in a vicious knob fight. Yeah, throwing it's pretty sad. Yeah, it is a real shame. Yeah, yeah throwing is a bit, bit of a tragedy. So... He's putting the o so uh, Andre protected his, his ogre, and to protect his ogre, he had to bench his thrower. So he only had two rerolls on defense, and only had one thrower. Right? If he'd had that extra thrower on the pitch, maybe he would have had the thrower free to do a uh, to do the pass, or maybe you'd you know, and plus you'd have had the reroll to do other things, and maybe he would have had uh, you know just even just dodge out with him, right? Because the three plus instead of edge four plus, like the lineman. So. Andrew did have a, a bit of a gimp team, 
now he gets to play the full team. Now, obviously, on offense, he doesn't have to protect the ogre. And his KO does come back. So, it's as you were. They've both got full strength teams. If Andre can get his offense done, he'll win 1 0. The problem is, Ordont, wildly inaccurate, means that it's not guaranteed to get the ball away anymore. <laughs> like he could have just wildly inaccurate back six and just given the ball to the to the uh to Andre. To the other knobs. Like it's wildly inaccurate is so bad, it makes like Everything so horrible. But yeah, I mean the failure of, of dodging with the uh with the dodger was terrible, right? The same way as it was in the first the like, first dodge he made with the dodger, so I understand him not wanting to. Okay, so Andrew's got the ball on a blodger. Instant. Which is where you want it, even though they can't really dodge too good. Instant stun. It's funny, isn't it? After, <laughs> after Fez's offensive blocks, which did absolutely nothing, Andre instantly gets a stun. Oh, is he going to hit the ogre with the uh, with the wrestle to make sure he gets it down, and then three dice? A peasant with the ogre, I think that is the best way to do it. <laughs> I don't have headphones in. <laughs> hey, there's no swearing. I mean, and the talking about knobs is inevitable because both teams are knobs. That's uh, that is what they are. Imperial ability. Knobs for sure. There's nothing rude about it. Um, nothing rude about that at all. Yes, Pogler, yes. <laughs> That's great, Mrs. Fez. <laughs> not, not many people can say that about their dad, can they? They were in. <laughs> they were in a knob off to. To determine if they made it the world championships or not. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, I mean, he's in the world championships, the knockout stage. The knockout stage of the world championships. I mean, this is the world championships group stage. Got a bit of weakness here, but the thing is, both t like neither team has an advantage, right? With it being a mirror, they've both got like you know, they're both just gonna go like neither can. Oh my god, I can't speak. Neither can reposition better than the other because they've got the same movement. So if you just like kind of mirror where the opponent is, they can't really outposition you, right? Whereas like. With Dark Elves versus Imperial Ability, say, they've got six movement, seven players. So they can like they can push and pull you and probe and then go one way and then the other and stuff and you can't keep up because you know, like the same with like, you know, dwarves versus elves and stuff, right? They just can't keep up. But knobs can always keep up with other knobs. So um unless you do something like this that gives them a way out, right? So now whether Andrew will take this way out. This is like the problem, like he generated more penetration, not penetration, pressure, right? 
this knob's creating pressure here, but by doing that, it's giving up cover behind. Like, you can't have both, right? You've only got 11 players, or however many you've got, and they're either covering, like, they're covering against penetration, or they're trying to uh, put pressure on to disrupt the protection. And he has gone for the pressure, which seems to have paid off because Andre hasn't, you know, rolled the dice to try and get past it. So with this guard in, he could blitz the ogre on two, couldn't he? And that's what, exactly what he's doing. Goodness, he hasn't removed him, but he has stunned him. That is bad times for Fez. I mean, good that he's only stunned, to be fair. Like, he could have just been KO'd or something, and then he's looking at a loss pretty much. If he, you know, if you go down an Olga, it's a huge swing. The guard telling for uh, Andre now, getting more hits, but not doing too much with it, actually. But also, it's like protecting them against hits. I actually don't like that at all from Andre there. I'd have absolutely kept this guy out. But now he, this guy can get blitzed and knocked down and then open up more hits. Uh, not that many hits, actually. But <laughs> The problem is, with a stand firm, they can't get any more hits, can they? Yeah, the lack of guard is is hurting Fez a bit now, but he does have more players, right? So we can use that. He can use the fact that he's got more players to probably actually blitz this guy and then just bring in assists over here and punch this guy. This blitzer looks nice, doesn't he? He's got lots of spikes. Lots of very spiky, flamey headman. Oh, he's dub skull. That is a painful reroll to use. Maybe had to. Uh, what happened, Soku, was an absolute hero play from Fez, a 4 plus 3 plus dodge. Um, a double rush from a bodyguard, first of all, and then a 4 plus 3 plus dodge from the thrower to get two dice on the ball. Got the pal, and then managed to hold off for the um, stop. That's okay, that gives him an assist in... No! No, Fez! No! He had to bring, bring in a player here and punch this guy on two. And if you powered him, he could have punched this guy on two. But, gets a, gets a knockdown and a stun from the 1D, so... It worked. Nice move that guy in anyway. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> Classic, I'll make a 1D and then move my guide to where he could have assisted afterwards. We've all done it. Andrew's used more time bank than Fez. Fez is uh, very fresh on time bank. That could be a factor if it goes to overtime, right? Like, neither has used much time bank, but as it goes on, if it goes to overtime... Andre could be a little bit depleted. I think that's a little bit too far forward. I'd like to see this guy back here. 
in case Andre makes a play to get forward. Which he might be making a, such a play right now. You can see the imbalance, right? One, two, three, four, five, six players compared to two of Andre's. Or maybe, maybe three. But it's like six to, six on three over here. Well, he's not on, right? So it's, it's five on three, but still it's an imbalance. If you look at this half of the pitch, it's wildly imbalanced. So he's taken the opportunity to get forward. Stun, stun would have been better if he then didn't move this guy, right? This guy should have come over this way after, after getting the stun. He should have come over this way. So he, he could have put, and that's why I'd have preferred him back here, right? Put him back here so that you can punch this, and then he can come over later, whereas now he can't come over anymore. Um, so yeah, I think this was a pretty bad spot for him to go in. Either go in before you hit here, or go there after you've hit, and yeah, Andre has got forward. Fen doing a thing. I mean, if he gets the power here, then he's got three players free to run up, but they're not going to get back in front. I think Andrew might score early if he can, right? Just get bang it in and trust in his defense again. Oh, wow. Oh, that is dreadfully unlucky. From Fez down to one reroll now. And he, you see, with failing on his offense, if he was 1 0 up, he could have just eaten that and gone to overtime with two rerolls. But it was, it was, there was no safe, well, there was one safe moves first, right? He's got two other players and an ogre that he could have done before that um, if the ogre isn't blitzing. So he still he still hasn't picked up his ogre, right? Maybe this is pressure, but he's got safe moves to do that he's not doing. I mean, this is what happens. Like pressure is the pressure is real. I've I've been in similar games, and there's a lot of pressure, a lot of nervousness, a lot of stress. Yeah, the boga needs to start start doing better. Oof. Okay, he must just be going to double rush. I, 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 the only explanation for not standing up yet was he's going to double rush. Um, but he didn't even stand. I would not have double rushed him, by the way. I'd have just stood here. I the first thing I would have done <laughs> would have been stand him up and put him here so he's up. Or you know he's up, right? You know if he's up or down. If you know he's down, then maybe, you know, you you, you don't go in there and you have a guy here or something, right? So uh, it's too risky to, like... Well, I say it's too risky. You know, if that's what you have to do, that's what you have to do, isn't it? Seventy percent of the time, you're in a good spot. Thirty percent, you're in a terrible spot. But you know, if you're not gonna, if you're not gonna win from the okay spot, then you have to go for the good spot, don't you? So that's what you've got to work out and judge for yourself. Make the assessment. But look how bad this guy is down the bottom, right? He needs so much better up.
pretty unlucky that Fez has the two block versus the two guard. So he's got more reliability with more block, and yet he's the one who's dubbed school twice. Which isn't great. Of course, Gabby Yass would look at two, only two dub schools and think that was nothing. Right, so that's a question even this. Uh, this. Right, here we go. Foul appearance. Because no one ever takes it. And it's like the absolute best defensive skill in the game, isn't it? Easy. Surprisingly easy and question answer. Oh my god, he's got a surf! Oh, he rolled the power. He's got, to, he's got to take the power. That was bad from Andrew, wasn't it? That was actually bad from Andrew. I mean, he got away with it. But wow. Wow, wow. Wow, 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 wow. Quite like this, quite like this defense. I'd probably try and dodge this guy away as well. Like, obviously, right to punch first. Yeah, good, good turn. I mean, bad from Andrew to leave that surf on. I, I'll be honest, I wasn't really watching because I was talking about, uh, <laughs> I was talking about my foul appearance. But yeah, that was uh, that was definitely a mistake by Andrew that he got away with. We could see an ogre blitz here, couldn't we? This is looking like a. Uh, Go through the ogre turn. Turn 13. Hasn't got that many turns left to score. Fend though stops him getting the assist on after the block. Hmm. Does get Kaz. He pays for it with his life. Will we see the big ogre blitz? Into a 1 in 9 and complete boga dominance. If you could write a script, that's what would happen. The knob off being decided by the clash of ogres. And the boga reigning supreme.
I'm sure Andrew's desperately desperately looking for anything other than that. <laughs> but I'm not sure there is anything other than that. Well, here we go. He activates him. He doesn't get the one in nine. He doesn't get the knockdown. But he does dislodge him. And creates a hole. Not a gaping hole. If he'd powered him, I think he'd have gone through. I think he'd have gone through if he'd powered him with everything, right? But... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 when you know it's what you've got to do, but you really don't want to do it. So you're desperately looking for. <laughs> Please let there be something else. Please. <laughs> but there wasn't. So he gets a tiny little bit of penetration, just the tip. <laughs> 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 Without blocker. Oh, lovely stun for Andre there. Makes his dodges outrageous. Yeah, I may, I maybe would have wanted to keep that a little bit more locked down. But, uh, fair enough. But yeah, bit of a bit of a pickle now. For Fez. That blitzer behind your lines is annoying. You don't really want to dedicate anyone to him. Oh, wow, he's going he's going all out. It's rough as well, because at this point it feels like, you know, overtime is the most you can realistically hope for as Fez. And you've already used two rerolls, so... Ooh, well, I thought I could 3D the, uh... The... Blocker here. But I guess, this guy's defenseless, right? So that's pretty good, isn't it? 75% knockdown on him. Takes care of a guard. Pushes him in with every the way everything else has gone. Pretty good. <laughs> Pickled knobs. Yeah, they would be, wouldn't they? I didn't think of that. Ooh. I think I'd have put this guy here. Funny, isn't it? I don't really know why, but I think I would have done. Or maybe here. Here. Like, there's no obvious way for Andre, right? There's no obvious way for Andre to go. I mean, I guess you block this and free up the ogre. And then... What? I guess come back to here is looking the best, actually. Come back to this way is looking maybe it's about the best. But it's not looking good. So, good turn. Good turn from Fez. Maybe you should. Nobler. Maybe you should. Wow, 3D. Oh, and then chains him away. Okay, that's pretty nice, isn't it? And gets the cars. It didn't follow, though. That's surely a mistake, because he wanted to go through this way, right? Now he's going to go 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, when he could have gone 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Weird. Pretty rough, isn't it? It's all pretty rough, man. The knob, the knob off is a. It's a brutal battle. I 
Andrew's in in time bank again. Nearly down to three thirty, whereas Fez is still seven whole minutes. Now you could say that Fez is playing too fast, and maybe he should, uh, you know, take a bit longer. But it's that's that, I mean that could be pretty good in overtime if uh, you know, Andrew starts running out of time, making mistakes, while Fez has a glorious full time bank. <laughs> Fez is really stacking up the OT equity except for the rerolls and injuries, yes. And score. <laughs> Apart from the score, the rerolls and the injuries, it's looking great for him. <laughs> yep, and there we go. Huge dodge. Huge dodge. And now... Yeah, push him to there. I think it was worth the 1D. One, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, rush. 1 dice, power him. Honestly, I would have gone 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, rush, rush. Ah, uh, no, because then it's still good. he can still hit you. Funny, if this ogre had been over, then that last guy could have gone 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, rush, rush, and completely protected the ball. As it is, this is pretty tricky. Can can this guy reach for an assist? No. Oh, he could have done, but it would have been a 4-4, four, four, which is unrealistic. Like, this is the problem. The problem here is, even if you know what the right play is, which none of us do because we don't have Blood Bowl Stockfish. But if you knew what the absolute best play was, it's still hard to like have the balls to go for it, right? Like because this probably is the best play, the double dodge rush one D. But like that just seems rubbish, right? So you want to do something safer, like you know, you wanna you want to like bring this guy around to here and punch him out and then he goes there and then like you dodge blitz and stand in front or whatever. But he is going for the one D. Makes all the dice rolls. Doesn't use his last re-roll. And you know, he probably had to use his last re-roll on that, right? As, as terrible as it is. As terrible as it is. He probably had to use his last re-roll, but you just don't want to, you know? You just, you just feel like you can't do that. Looking very bad for Fez now. Don't say it's over, but... It's, uh... It's close to it. You can surf this blitzer. And then you can, uh, get the ball right near the end zone. It's the push. It has been a, val a valiant attempt, yep. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not over. Look, this is how over it was in the first half, to be fair. So it's actually, it's, it is fully not over. But, um... <laughs> Free from Blood Bowl.
<laughs> and his kid gets to say he was in a knob off. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, absolutely, absolutely the real winner. this. One, two, three, rush, rush, that doesn't work. So, four, five, six, seven, eight. So he's got to do a four, four, three, two, two, one dice pal. Or he's got to do a three, four, four, three with dodge. And with one reroll, this one's probably better, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That saves you the twos as well. This is probably the best play. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One D him, pow him, kill him. Rough. I mean, it's really rough. It's really rough, but like, is there anything else? Not really, so you've got to do it. Oh, I guess the other way is the ogre could go one, two, three. Ah, uh, no, because you can't, you can't clear. Oh, yeah, you can clear this, clear this, and the ogre can go three, four, five. Ah, oh, you can't reach. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then the, then the, then the boger could. Uh, it would get 2D, right? Because it, but it would it would need like a four plus. It would need a power here, and then it would need like a four plus dodge and a six plus dodge. So that might still be the best way of doing it. Like the stupid thing is, that might still have been the best play. Who knows? Oh, tanks, Marley. <laughs> Oh my god, oh my god. Oh, oh no, it was a 5 plus dodge, not a 4. Oh. I really thought, I really thought it was like a 3 dodge and then a 4 dodge, but of course it was a 5 dodge. And then it was a 4, then another 3, and then a 1D. And Andrew obviously isn't going to do anything else, just go straight in. And, uh, of course there's no 1 turn versus 3 stand firm. But there could be a timeout. So it's still not over. There could be a timeout, but you know, that's not very likely to be a success. <laughs> to be honest. Because uh You know, two turns aren't easy, and you've got to you've got to roll the you've got to roll the perfect defense and uh, not the perfect defense the timeout. You've got to roll the timeout, and then you've got to like roll a million dice without a reroll. So it's not realistic for it to happen. Unfortunately, but it was a great, a great effort by Fez. But at the end of the day, Andre, I mean, absolutely one of the best players in the tournament, in my opinion. Um, does get through and uh, 
successfully navigates <laughs> the field of knobs. <laughs> and uh, yeah, manages to progress from group O. So there was the group. Go Go Bear won it, then Andre and Fez were tied on four. They drew each other. That led to this playoff. And uh, yeah, congratulations, Andre. Commiserations, Fez. And that concludes the group phase, group stage of the World Championships. And you can see there, there are the full list of qualifiers, the uh, group winners, the group runners up. And uh, also the races there, as you can see, six out of seven Wood Elves qualified for the, for the final stage, knockout phase. I think they called it the final phase. Uh, yeah, I think it's called the final phase. So six out of seven Woodies, four out of six Dark Elves, uh, four out of five Skaven, three out of five Necro. I mean, they they look like to be the best racers. Imp knobs had to qualify because there were so many of them. <laughs> there had to be at least one qualifier, um, so you can't read too much into that. The human qualifier was actually a lizard man qualifier who pulled out. Um, Gabias did finish second in Group D, but um, he couldn't take part, so Slave Black Mage took his place. Um, and yeah, Undead, Orcs, both no less than half made it through, but there was a lot of them, wasn't there? So, so I guess they were going to bound to be in the same groups and not able to progress as, as well. And the Lizardmen are the big shock, 2 out of 8. But um, I mean, that very easily could have been 4 out of 8, right? Just a few dice rolls here and there. And uh, who knows? So there you go. And congrats, so congrats not only to Andre, but everybody who got through to the final phase. And of course, everyone who got through to the round 64. It was not easy to even get to the final 64. So congrats to everyone in the tournament thus far. Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.